Coming up in this episode, we'll leave Claybank behind and summit the largest peak on the North York Moors before heading out across a vast stretch of historic moorland, eventually dropping down into the village of Kildale. Day four of the Cleveland Way, Carlton Bank to Kildale. Nine miles, 982 foot ascents. Let's go. That's how we came down White Hill on the last segment of the last part of the Cleveland Way. Over here, we've got rosemary topping. And this is the start of Oer Moor. It's quite a steep ascent. Look over there, Nicholas. From day three, Kringle Moor, Live Moor and Cold Moor. Lots of moors. It's time for Gate of the week! Here we have Coldmoor, Kringlemoor, Carltonmoor and Livemoor. But this is the view ahead. And that's all you can see. You can see a bit of more land in front of you. But if you were doing the Cleveland Way the other direction, then just look at that. You've got your path. And you can see where you're going across this fantastic landscape. And that lies in front of you the whole way. I'd argue that the Cleveland Way would best be done in reverse. I agree. Onwards into the nothingness. Always important to remember, keep an eye out for adders, and even worse, ticks. Taking a short diversion to get the trick point on the highest point, the North York Moors, the summit of Ulla Moor. Trick point, top of Ulla Moor, standing in a whopping 1,489 feet above sea level. Not only that, it's also on top of a Bronze Age burial mound. The summit of Oamor, the highest point in the North York Moors. Barely make out rosebe topping dwarfed in the distance. This handstone is a guidepost erected in the 18th century and features a hand this side pointing to Stokesley, which is Stokesley, and a hand this side directing us to Kirby, which is Kirby Moor side. And here we have an ancient boundary marker. Also from the 18th century, the crude outline of a face has been carved into it. So this that we're walking on now is called a fire break. So when they burn the heather, it stops here. We've just taken a sharp left at a crossing that apparently used to have manned gates because this that we're walking on now is an ancient road. Um, so yeah, we took a left. We could have gone straight on if we were doing the coast to coast, but we're not. We're doing the Cleveland Way, so we took a left. This ancient road runs apparently for two and a half miles. Are these interesting stones? What? This is another boundary stone and it has the name of the person that owns the land and on the back it's got measurements of the boundary and apparently this smaller stone is dedicated to someone called Jenny Bradley but nobody knows who Jenny Bradley is. 
Ou Ou So I don't know whether you can make out here, there's like a load of sticks sticking up, which is the remains of a building and it's known as Siberia, which is the nickname the railmen gave to the tiny group of cottages which existed at the incline top. The ironstone wagons were let down the incline one in five to one in 11 by gravity, with the empty wagons hauled up by the full ones going down. All traces have disappeared now, except the incline and the ruined drum house. Let's walk in towards Middlesbrough in the distance. There's a sole Christmas tree on the horizon. I think I might call that one Wills. Middlesbrough in the distance looking quite nice. This little area where we are now is called Tidy Brown Hill and the word tidy is said to be the, a corruption of tiddy meaning small. Rose be topping over here and we've got a first glimpse of the sea which means that the coastal section of the Cleveland Way can't be too far away. That's us saying goodbye to Battersby Bank. Just joined a tarmac road on the final stretch towards Kildale. Way back there. Look at the moody sky now. Private grid to be used at unrest, weight limit is one ton. No, go back. Road to nowhere. Da, da, da. And now the end is near. We're approaching the end of day four. Done. Here we are, the end of day four of the Cleveland Way, Claybank to Kildale. What was your best bits, Nicholas? Um, I liked all the ancient stones on the top of the moors and all the history you found out about them. I found that really interesting. What about you, Joel? What did you like the best? My best bit was the highest point of the North York Moors. It was lovely up there. It was nice up there. What's your worst bits? Um, there was a big section of the moorland where there was no views to either left or the right. Um, it was just moors on that side, moors on that side, and moors in front. Um, but to be fair, that was only about two or three miles of the walk and it's a very long walk and most of the views are spectacular so the pros far outweigh the cons on this one. What about you, Jilly? What was your next Yeah, piece? I completely agree with you. Definitely, way too many mores. Um, I liked the, uh, I don't know, what, what did I say? There were some moorland sections where there was no views to the sides. It was just more and more, more, more. <laughs> of the Cleveland Way? Play bank to Kildale. What was your best bit? What about you, Joe? What did you? <laughs> <laughs> just, just... Here we go. The end of day four of the Cleveland Way. Kildale. Play bank to Kildale. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here we are. The end of day four of the Cleveland Way. Play bank to Kildale. What was your best bit, Nicholas? Um, I liked all the uh, historic stones that, you, and all the it's just a <laughs> bridge or across the way you've been, and that far out way. It's low where you go, I go to. And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you. Let's take it slow. Who cares where we gotta be? You know you'll have a good time wherever you're with me. Let's take it.